Hey guys, and welcome to Coffee with Carter, where we will talk all things music and life with the amazing people involved in our industry. We will chat about our experiences, where we are currently at in our careers, and how we're looking to grow and leave our mark on the industry. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get straight into it. Awesome. All right, guys. Hey, guys, and welcome to the very first episode of Coffee with Carter. I'm super excited to start this show and podcast where we're going to be talking all things music from um, singers, songwriters, producers, artists, representatives, the works, um, and hopefully share a little bit of insight into our journey and where we're currently at. But I think more importantly, kind of where we're looking to go and how we're going to make our mark on the industry and get to the next level, I guess. So without further ado, I'm super excited to introduce the very first guest on the show, someone who I've recently uh, released a song with, but I've, I've never actually met. This is the first time <laughs> we're actually talking uh, via... You know, we've spoken online, texts and whatever, but we haven't actually heard each other's voices. So this is a really cool experience. She's a super talented singer-songwriter all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, uh, and her name is Emily Falvey. Emily, Hi, welcome. Hello. It's so good to be with you guys. I'm thanks so happy to be with you, Carter. Thank you for having me. No, thanks for, thanks for joining. I'm super excited and... Um, yeah, I guess I guess right off the bat, I, I just wanted to do like a little a nice little starting segment just to, you know, spice things up. What are you a are you a coffee or you're a tea person or Oh, I really honestly am a super big coffee person, but it's eight yeah. PM here in Nashville and so if I drink yeah. coffee I'd be up all night. So I'm having a nice breathe deep tea. This is a it. songwriter festival in Nashville, ten PM South, if you're ever looking to visit uh, I love Nashville, it. that's good time to come visit. So I'm just enjoying my nighttime tea. You know, I, I had a feeling that I'd ask that question and you'd, and you say that I'm like, it's nighttime over there. She's probably going to be having a tea. And I pondered uh, putting wine in here, but I thought that might be a little much. So I just stuck. Oh, tea. get a bit tipsy buddy, <laughs> by the end of yep, it. I know, right? Oh, I love it. All right. Well, I guess, um, just to start things off, I just want to, I think just provide like a little brief snapshot, like, you know, a one or two minute snapshot onto how you got to where you are now and maybe like the pivotal moments that kind of got you to where you are. Like, I don't want, you know, like the whole life story, but maybe like, you know, pivotal moments that kind of got to where you are now. And um, yeah, we'll just go from there. Totally. Well, my family moved a lot all throughout the United States. So I kind of never really had like an anchoring hometown. But the one thing that stayed constant throughout my life was music. I started playing piano when I was five. I, my parents put me in piano lessons. I never was very athletic. They put me on in soccer and all those types of things that you do with a little kid. And I would like sit on the side of the field and pick flowers. I just wasn't really into sports and they wanted me to commit to something. So they put me in yeah. piano lessons. Yeah. And I really latched onto it. Um, and then I started writing songs around age nine, kind of when Taylor Swift really broke onto the scene. Um, it really inspired me. Um, there was a show on Nickelodeon here in the States called Naked Brothers Band that was also kind of big at the time. Okay. And it was about these two brothers who um, they were writing songs. And so there was just a lot on my TV about you should be writing songs. And yeah. so I was just so excited about it. Um, yeah. And I ended up like finding out when I was in middle school that there was a university called Belmont University in Nashville that had a songwriting major. And it sounded so cool to me to be able to study songwriting as a career. I didn't even know that that was a thing, but then it kind of led me down this whole spiral of figuring out that it's not just the artists that write songs. It's a ton of other people. And usually the artist just kind of puts their own spin on it or the artist is in the room with a bunch of other people writing. And so yeah. it kind of became my goal from when I was like 12 or 13 to get into Belmont. And then I ended up getting in. Luckily it's, okay. it was a hard program to get into the songwriting program. And yeah. I was really nervous. I'll never forget the day I got my acceptance letter. My mom was waiting for me. I had come <laughs> home from a voice lesson and she had the letter and she was like, oh, I love that. <laughs> that so amazing. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went to school for songwriting and did a ton of internships in the Nashville music industry. And that kind of led me, I interned at the company 
where I'm signed now. And that was awesome to right. be able to like go from being their intern and kind of being around the company and kind of being mm-hmm. thought of as the girl that went to the grocery store to go get all the coffee and the LaCroix, awesome. you know, to yeah. being able to be the equal of the people yeah. at that company. So. Right. Okay. So you're signed. So that's how, because I was going to, that was going to be my next question. How did you get signed to Smack Songs? Yes. So it was so it through was, that internship. It was a crazy story. I actually did a double major when I got to school. I got really right. intimidated. Belmont's one of yeah. the best music schools here. And right. I saw how talented everybody was. And I didn't think I was nearly good enough like all those other kids. And so yeah. I thought to myself, I'm kind of type A and businessy. So maybe I should be a publisher or be a label person instead mm-hmm. of writing songs. And I got my heart broken the summer before my last year of college and was kind of just writing songs for the sake of like therapy. You know, yeah, it was just okay. my way of getting over the situation. Yeah, and yeah. the head publisher, her name's Robin Palmer. Um, she signed Shane McAnally, who he's a really big songwriter here. He wrote like Body Like a Back Road by Sam Hunt, uh, a bunch yeah. of Kevin Musgrave stuff. Like he's yeah. like one of the top national songwriters and she signed him. Right. And in a very happenstance kind of way, she heard one of those songs I wrote in my bedroom. And she said, okay. Emily, you have something. And I'd really like to talk to you about it. And they ended up signing me, which was just crazy. That's insane. So, yeah. Or, insane. Yeah. I mean, you definitely do have something because, yeah, I've, I've experienced that firsthand. Um, you do, have, clearly. Yeah, for sure. With, with our song, which, which I'm going to dive, which I'm going to dive into a bit later. With the awesome. smack, with the publishing thing, I was just going to say, mm-hmm. like, how, like, what are the kind of benefits you've seen from being published? Like, have they really helped you, like, push you into sessions and, like, yeah. just, just literally, like, grab every opportunity? Is that kind of what they've done? I feel like being a songwriter, I don't know if it works this way in Australia, but for us in our music industry, we're independent contractors. So we sign a contract. And so our services are kind of, they belong exclusively to that company. But at the end of the day, we're self-employed. Like I file my own taxes. I am kind of running my own business. And so Smack is an incredible partner to me. They have, they're such a credible company here in Nashville that they've gotten me into rooms that I wouldn't have had any business being in, but their connections Mm -hmm got me to really cool sessions. Um, but I definitely, yeah. think, especially in Nashville, like the community is so tiny. It's almost like high school. Everybody just knows it each other. Like in that. A yeah. Small town. Yeah. And so I think at the end of the day, I feel personally responsible for my reputation and what the songs I'm writing, you know, if I were to lose my publishing deal tomorrow, I would like to think that I'd be able to get another one based upon the relationships I have with other publishers and other label people and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah, so they've really helped you grow and um, improve as a, as a songwriter. That's yeah. They, like leaps and bounds difference. Like, like I've been signed there two years and just the, the caliber of people that I've been able to be exposed to, like every time I've gone into a room with a better writer than me, I feel like I leave the room as a better writer. Yeah. And I think that's so obviously good. without a publishing deal, you can like, get to a certain level and you can work to get better. And that whole like Malcolm Gladwell theory of like 10,000 hours is so key, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. Um, But I think to be able to have a publisher has just given me exposure to like extraordinary, like game changing writers. And to be able to learn from those people has changed my whole life. Yeah. That's really cool to know. I think that's really good to know for, songwriters kind of moving up in the scene um yeah because yeah I guess you can you can get to this certain spot and then it's kind of like you've exhausted all your friends of friends kind of connections and you just need that external source to just like push you out to 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 get in a room with people that you probably wouldn't have like ever been in a room with um, the good news is though there's this Nashville school of thought everybody says like rise together so right. yes I get to be in the room with really cool writers but I've found most of my cuts and my stuff that's happened hasn't been with those big writers it's been with my friends yeah and I feel yeah. like the squad that you're building in Melbourne and like you're gonna rise with your friends and it's yeah. gonna be cool you guys are gonna push each other like as one friend signs somewhere and does you know like everybody's bringing each other up yeah so that's 
I love that. I can see, I can so see that about Nashville. Like everyone is even just like when I like went to follow you on Instagram, I could just yes. tell like everyone, like everyone else connected. It was just such a, like a really like strong community and like strong, um, like bubble there, which is, which is, yeah, it's really cool. Um, it's really- yeah, I guess, um, I guess let's talk about kind of, our song because I think that um, that was a really awesome experience. I mean, when I guess for, so for those who don't know, Emily and I have have just released a song. Well, we released it in January, so actually not um, just released. It's it's already been that long now. Which is but crazy. It feels like it was yesterday. Yeah, it just keeps it keeps kind of rolling, doesn't it? Which is yeah. which is awesome. And um, basically. Emily just, um, I, I did the production backing track for this song and I sent it to Emily who I actually found, I actually found you because my best friend mentioned a singer who yeah. was Savannah, Savannah Segro. Yeah, Segro. Yes. yes. He's my friend. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he mentioned her and I was like, okay, he's like, you should check out this singer. Like she's really cool. He just like found yeah. her on Spotify and I was like, all right, cool. I'll ch- like I check her out, and I just like I was like, wow, like this girl's voice is like insane. Yeah, it's and so cool. Yeah, and I just like did some more digging. I just literally went Spotify credits. Yeah, and I found that you'd written. Um, is it happy anymore? Happy anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. written happy That's anymore. So fun. Yeah, I didn't know that song. sorry. I didn't know you knew that song. That's so cool. Yeah, no, I, I listened to like all her stuff. Like it, her, yeah, like her songwriting and like voice itself is, is insane. So like, yeah, I literally just went Spotify credits, saw your name and I thought, Oh, I'll just, I'll just check out um, some songwriters. And then you played a cover. You just played like a piano cover on your Instagram and your voice. And I just heard your voice. I'm like, actually your voice would really suit, um, you know, this demo. I'll see if you can do anything with it. So yeah. that's when I, I shot you the, um, the demo over uh, email. And, yeah. um, yeah, like I didn't expect, I mean, cause you don't expect like blind emails like that. The thing is you don't really expect anything to come from it. And it's just like, it was so awesome how you just jumped on board and like, I want to get a bit of insight into what goes through, like, what's your thought process when you're receiving demos like that? Like, yeah. obviously you can't jump on everything. Like it's just, you know, yeah. you can't, but like how... Did you decide to jump on that one compared to something else or yeah? To be honest with you, like this has changed a lot even since I talked to you that first time. Like I feel like I had one feature come out with an EDM group based out of Los Angeles uh, like last year. And that led to a couple of things. And I think our song got so many people's attention (laughs) that I I think in quarantine alone, I've written like 10 top lines to tracks that people have like, and I think it's so flattering because I think it speaks to the work that we did together and just like people yeah. want to emulate that, or I guess have my voice because they liked what our song did or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. I think I've had to learn to be more particular about mm-hmm. those types of things and really like listening to things with intentional ears of like, do I have something to offer this track? Is this something that speaks to me creatively? Is this something that I'm excited by or compelled by? Mm -hmm. Is this even like the interpersonal piece of it, Carta, you've been so gracious and kind and like wonderful to work with this whole time. I feel like not, I feel like in the music industry and I'm sure you've experienced this, there's a ton of ego and a ton Mm -hmm. of like people who are too big for their britches as we'd say here in America. Yeah. 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 Uh, my goal is to deal with people who are humble and who are equal partners, you know, who want to show up and really like make music that matters and be kind to one another. And so I've learned, I think through this process, like I'm so glad that I listened and heard something. I don't, I honestly kind of remember being like, I'm so excited. I'm going to bring this. And then I brought it into a session with my friend Austin and we both were really stoked on the track. And I was mostly like, I think it was one of the first times somebody had reached out to me and been like, I really want to hear your voice on this. And I was just so flattered and excited that it made me so stoked to partner with you guys. And it ended up like being this crazy thing. I don't think we even would have envisioned had happened. Uh, 
No, not at all. Yeah, that's crazy. I guess, yeah. Like, I guess now with that being released, yeah, you would have to really pick and choose. Um, yeah. It's, um, it's fine. I just wanted to, yeah, get your kind of your thoughts on that because, yeah, I just thought like the whole experience was crazy. and It um, was. And I'm so thankful that you heard something in what I did because I heard something in what you did and it was just this amazing like fusion of people from across the world who both had a creative vision. And I think yeah. that's such a testament to like the age that we're living in. Like we yeah. don't have to live in the same country even to make no music that to somebody. That's it. Like this whole collaboration was just done online um, without even like we, I didn't even like, I sent you the song and said hi at the same time. Like I hadn't even said yeah. like, hi, it was kind yeah. of like an all, I was like an all in. Um, it was awesome. Uh, and it worked out great. And I'm yeah. thankful. No, for sure. For sure. And I think um, any, you know, any producers like out there that want to work with like, songwriters and singers you you can like you you can do yeah. it because you just have to do some digging and just like you yeah. know there, there's so many people on spotify it is ridiculous and now with spotify you can see everyone who's written everyone's songs so it's kind of just like there's you know like you know think outside the square like songwriters are also singers i guess yeah. i guess that i guess that kind of leads to probably my next question like do yes. you want to be more like you want to be a songwriter, but with the, is it kind of like the Julia Michaels vibe or is it like the uh, more songwriter of Julia Michaels vibe? That's the, a very good question. That's kind mm. of the million dollar question. My yeah. culture says a lot about that question because I think there's definitely interest in, mm. I've gotten asked if I wanted to be an artist multiple yeah. times. I am so much more passionate about, the songwriter lifestyle, like the yeah. idea of being on the road all the time and being on tour and never being home. Like I'm super type A and a control freak and I love to have a routine yeah. and in my yeah. life being a songwriter. I have an appointment every day at 11. Yeah. I can have a breakfast meeting before my write. I can, you know, find time to go for a walk in the afternoon. I can, you know, go to the store on the weekend, you know, like mm -hmm. I have my whole regimented life. And I think that has really appealed to me. I yeah. don't want to rule out being an artist down the road. Like if um if it's later in life and somebody amazing were to pop up and say, Hey, I'd really love to produce a record or I'd love to sign you to a record deal. You know, I don't know if I'd say no to that, but yeah. for the moment it's so fun to do stuff like what we did where I can sing and we can yeah. have a fun time. And who knows if there's some big festival in Australia, we can perform the song together someday. I would love That's that. It. That's it. But I, I'm so content in my life of just being a songwriter. Yeah. No, nah, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a great answer and, and it makes a lot of sense. I mean, that tour life and artist life, it is frantic and it's like, yes. you know, I, I deal with it. Every, I'm always thinking about things every day. It's just like, like you're not only thinking about the music, you're thinking about your brand, you're thinking about marketing, you're yes. thinking about like how do you want to, you know, grow. Like there's just, mm -hmm. it's it's not just the music you have to think about. So yeah. it does, it does make a lot of sense and it kind of really like tunnel visions you into, you know, writing, writing more songs and, um, writing even better songs. Oh. Um, I guess, do you find, do you find the whole like session, like how many sessions do you do a week? Like, do you, like <laughs> on an, in a normal, in a kind of normal environment? I mean, uh, we're living in, you know, this crazy time but yeah it honestly varies but my publisher books me kind of at a bare minimum of four to five sessions a week so every day I mm -hmm. kind of basically have a job so I'm working with a different artist most of my work that I do here in Nashville is country so I'll, okay. pro I'll be with the country artist most of the time every single day or I'll be with usually it's a producer myself and an artist and we're writing a song for that artist project. Mm. Um, but some days there's a songwriter along with me in there and we write a song for pitch. Um, it just kind of depends on the day, but I also like Savannah is a perfect example. Savannah is mm -hmm. a friend of mine who has built such an incredible following as an independent artist and she's yeah. amazing. I'm such yeah. a fan of her. And 
she and my friend Savannah Santos, Savannah Santos is an amazing producer and one of my favorite voices in Nashville. And she's in this group called Avenue Beat that just signed to Big Machine Records out here wow. in Nashville. And so we wrote that Happy Anymore song on an afternoon. I had a morning session that day and then I ended up driving. I do a lot of double sessions. So right. I'll typically like when quarantine lifts and life is back to normal, I'd say I probably write like around seven six or seven times a week. Usually that I'll have a nine. Insane. Yeah, that's it's awesome. crazy. But that's my, you know, like I don't have another job. I'm getting paid to be a songwriter, which is such a huge blessing. So yeah. I kind of feel like I'm spending 40 to 50 hours a week doing music, which is the dream. Yeah. No, that's, that is crazy. That's um. so that, so that is your job. Like you, you are just like hustling like every day writing. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like my publisher, I'll never forget it. I got my first check right as I was graduating from college. They handed me my first, like they call it an advance check here. Right. And, um, and it was the craziest feeling to be like, they're paying me to write songs. Like who yeah. did I fool into like thinking that they should pay me to write songs? So it's yeah. the craziest, coolest job in the world. I feel lucky every day. That is insane. That's so cool. I guess like, do you ever feel, cause I, I've spoken to friends and like, we like sometimes we get on like the session kind of like, I don't, I don't even know the word. Like we just don't want to do any sessions. Like we just yeah. kind of like want to just have our own time and like take a break. Like, do you ever, I guess, cause it's kind of your job. Like it's kind of like, well, I have to do this. Like you're like almost forced. So I guess it's in one way can be, you know, a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing. It's definitely like I go through seasons, honestly, emotionally, where I'm like this about it. You know, I'll have great yeah. weeks where I'm so excited about everything that I'm writing, and I'll have weeks where I'm like, oh my gosh, I hate everything that I've been a part of this week. You know? Yeah, yeah. But I think what's so cool about collaboration, like I'm rarely writing by myself anymore. That was kind of how yeah, I started. Okay. As a songwriter, was writing by myself, but now I'm working with producers and there's some sound that inspires us in the room or mm. an artist is going through something in their personal life and we write about that. Or I have a list of concepts that I keep in my, I have just like a note full of titles and ideas for songs. And so yeah. If we put all our heads together, usually there's some sort of inspiration that strikes and it's a good day, but some days we're just like, you know what? We're not in the vibe. Let's go to lunch. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's it. really good too. Give yourself grace, creatives that are watching this. Like not every day do you have to be a perfect song machine. Mm -hmm. Like give yourself grace to be inspired and just go through the whole process and let creativity come to you when it does. Yeah. No, that's, that's spot on. It happened. It happens all the time, doesn't it? It's, um, yeah. it is, a, it is a real thing. Um, well, I guess on the sessions thing, like, do you have, I don't know if, have you been working with anyone that's been really exciting at the moment or, um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything you can share, but, uh, like, I don't know, some, some cool things that you kind of will reflect on and be like, this is kind of a cool moment that will help me get to that next level. Yeah. I feel like that is happening more and more to be honest mm. with you. Like I've been looking at my calendar and I'm just so excited for all yeah. of the opportunities that are coming about. Yeah. Um, a couple of months ago I got to write with Shane, um, my boss for the first time, his name's uh, Shane. Cool. That, um, and then that's, a 360. that's like a, yeah, it was so cool and crazy. Cause he's like, he's so busy with he's whenever he's in Nashville, he's working with the top, top Nashville artists like that there are Sam Hunt, you know, all these really big wow. people. Yeah. And when he's not in Nashville, he lives in LA part time now filming this TV show called Songland. I don't know if it would even, you would even have heard of it, but so there's I've, a show. I've on heard of that. Yeah. I've, I've seen that somewhere. Yeah. It's like a spinoff of the voice. So it might hopefully make its way to other countries. Um, yeah. But Ryan Tanner, Esther Dean and Shane are the judges on the show. And it's all yeah. about songwriting. Yeah like an American Idol or the voice for songwriters, which is so cool. Yeah, that's, so that's sick. It's amazing to get to see him. He's mentored. Like I've had friends go on that show and mm. it's so cool to watch him serve as a mentor in that capacity. But his schedule is so busy that to get to work with him was like the coolest, craziest, most awesome thing. And in that room as well was this songwriter named Amy Wodge. And she wrote Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran, oh, which is geez. a small song that uh, existed yeah. <laughs> and the two oh. of them like Shane 
texted me on a Friday and he said, Hey, are you available Monday to write with me and Amy? And I was like, I'll check my schedule. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was the it's coolest, cool. craziest thing to like, they are two of my absolute heroes. And the song mm-hmm. that we wrote just went on hold for an artist on universal records here in Nashville. And so it's cool. just so cool to like, that was a song about something that I was just going through in my personal life at the time. And I was just very transparent in the room and to see yeah. that hopefully, I don't know if the artist will even cut it. That's the thing about, you know, getting songs put on hold and you never, the music industry is not full of guarantees, That's um, but it's so cool to get to work with your heroes. And on top of that, there's a songwriter in town named Josh Kerr. Um, he's somebody, he just won a Grammy this year. Um, he's yeah. amazing. Like, truly a triple threat. He's an amazing producer, amazing writer. Like he could sit in any seat in the room. He's an artist. He's actually putting a song that we wrote together out on this upcoming Friday. Um, I saw that. Really I saw cool. that. Yeah. I'm, I'm pumped. And he's just like been a hero of mine. The songs that he's been a part of and the records that he's produced have been some of my like cornerstone albums that I've loved through my college years. And mm. so he and I have really struck up a cool creative partnership, which has been so wonderful. Um, I That's actually cool. also have struck up a partnership with his wife, Tay Dye and Maddie Marlowe. They're in this group here called Maddie and Tay. I'm working with them a good bit. There's all these people that like, I would listen to their music mm. and just fame girl who I'm now yeah. getting in the room with, which is just like the craziest, coolest full circle feeling. Yeah. Wow. I guess that that all started with the the internship at at Smack, like Smack Soul. It's so crazy, like yeah. literally, to see like. Honestly, I think it's a great lesson for everybody. Just mm. being willing to humble yourself, and I think I had an enthusiastic attitude about doing even the mundane tasks of an internship. You know, I yeah. did all of my typing and my projects well, and I think it showed them that I had a work ethic. That's it. To be somebody that they could sign. I think you have to want it so bad. And you know this, you know, just like yeah. you have to want it and you have to work tirelessly and insatiably to get to where you want to go as a musician. And mm-hmm. I think they saw that hunger and that desire in me and it made them feel comfortable. I don't think I was the most talented. I still don't think I'm the most talented writer mm-hmm. that I like. I really know so many songwriters who are more naturally gifted than I am. Yeah. But I do think that I have a work ethic and I'll show yeah. up and I will bring ideas and I always want to just like outwork everybody. And I think that That's there's cool. a lot to be said for that, especially, you know, as we're trying to make a name for ourselves. And I could yeah. say the same thing for you, like as an independent artist to see your song getting played on the radio, that doesn't happen by accident. You know, like yeah, you're exactly. somebody who clearly has so much talent and prowess as a producer that like, it's leading to big things. And I think once one big thing starts to happen, it mm-hmm. snowballs and it's just cool to start to feel that happen in both of our careers. It's fun. Yeah. That's no, nah, that's, that's spot on. That's um, it is like, and it's rewarding because you, you do put in all that hard work and it's kind of like, well, at least this is like, like I can see something for it. Like there's something like, you know, like you yeah. can, you can really see the results. Um, yeah. No, that, that is, that, that's awesome. I guess, um, like looking ahead, what do you, yes. what do you kind of envision for yourself? Like what, what's, what are the few goals that you'd like to tick off? Like. It's know. been so cool to start to see little things happen. I mm. obviously, our song is on the radio in Australia, yeah. which is the coolest thing. Yeah. Like uh, your, vo- your voice, like, I don't know if you understand, but your voice, your voice is literally on like, like no so nova 100 is like the station it's like everyone knows nova it's so crazy you know like it's not it's not um like to be fair it's not like daytime like where we're hidden with like the arianas and etc but it's like it's like a nine you know nine to ten o'clock slot which like any artist in australia would like would be so stoked with that and like yeah what an honor yeah, yeah. It's so cool. I don't. I joke to my parents. I'm like, maybe I'm a little famous in Australia. I really know <laughs> I'm not, but it's just cool and funny. Um, I have a song with an artist on BMG UK. Her name's Twenty. Um, it's on the BBC's. I think it's Radio Two. Um, and oh, then yeah. I have a song 
that's on the charts in Canada. Um, it's called Seeing Other People. It's with this artist here in Nashville named Mackenzie Porter, and she's extraordinary. And so oh. all of like all the stuff that's happening has been with my friends, which is cool. Yeah. I love to continue to have success with my friends. Yeah. Um, but I think it's my dream, and I'm hoping this Seeing Other People song is climbing the charts in mm. Canada, and I'm hoping that that will lead to a big hit in Canada. Yeah. And then it, there's, you know, rumors flying around that it'll be Mackenzie's next single on country radio here in America, which would be a really cool thing to have a song on the radio here. That's just such a dream of mine to have songs on the radio. And mm. I think kind of like a like the thing, like the benchmark of being a successful songwriter in Nashville is a number one song. Yeah. And so sure. I think I'd love to work. It's kind of my goal to get a BMI award here in the United States, which is like a, it's, I know y'all have a performing rights organization. It's one of our performing rights organizations here. Yeah. And t- when you have one of the top 10 most played songs of the year, you or something, it's like, might be top 40 songs, but mm. they do like the, the most popular radio songs. And I'd love to have one of those awards in the next couple of years if I could. So I'm just trying to well, like, sure you'll make, get it. <laughs> yeah, trying to make measurable goals, but also like, mm giving myself grace because in music there's so little that we can control, you know, like we That's can't it. at the end yeah. of the day, like radio programmers make a lot of decisions about what songs no. are hits. So I'm just trying to write the best songs I can in the room and leave the rest up to the artist who sings them and just pray that record labels and radio promo people do their job too. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, it's the right, it's the perfect attitude. Like you control what you can control and the rest will just take care of itself. Um, it's, true. it's, um, yeah, it's not, I'm not, I'm almost not surprised, like speaking to you for the first time, your, your kind of attitude and how you've gone about things. It, it's just like, it's kind of a no brainer. Um, mm-hmm. how you've, you've gone about things and, um, the, su- the success, um, it has come and it's, I'm sure so much more is to come. So yeah. Selfishly, I want to know what you're excited about and what you're working on. Yeah, sure. Um, well I've, I mean, I've got an next single, my next single is I think start of July around start of July. So, um, yeah, that's, a. it's the same, it's similar vibes to, to wasted actually. It's, um, it's yeah, still, still that same theme. And then, um, yeah. I've got, I mean, I'm in a pretty good place. Like I've got, um, my next few singles kind of, kind of lined up, which is, which is really good. I, I was kind of at a stage where I was always chasing my tail. I was like, yeah. I, I think a lot of artists just get to that point where they've released a song and then they're kind of just like, Oh, I need to find another one. I need to find another one. But um, I've kind of gotten ahead a little bit, which is good. Um, yeah. so yeah, I've got, I've got a new single It's called need you now, which is coming out, um, started July ish. And then yeah, another one after that with a Mary, uh, she's from LA actually. Um, her name's Jordan powers. I don't know if, I don't that know. rings the bell. The yeah. song writing is not that big, so I'm sure yeah. we have cross paths. But that's exciting. Yeah, so that's that's another cool one, and and yeah, I, like I said, I've just got the next few, like you know, almost like the year kind of sorted. So it's it's oh. good to have that um, be in that frame 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 of mind. Yeah. Yes. So, exciting uh, to plan, but also to just roll with it and be excited by what continues to come about. I think it's so good. hundred percent, hundred percent. So yeah. All right. Well, I guess that's, I mean, I'm looking at my clock here and we're at, we're at 33 minutes. So first episode and we, I told you I talk a lot. I tried to even keep it concise, but I love it. No, I love it. The, the kind of your story thus like to date has been, I reckon so many people will um, take a lot from it and um, you know, even, even just to chat and catch up and finally, you know, like speak to each other is, is awesome. So it's the best. I'm so happy that we did it and I can't wait to find an excuse to come to you or for you to come here and it's going to yeah. be great to collaborate. Yeah. I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to come to Nashville. Um, one day, I think the community is like, so it's just like, so, um, it's like warm there. Like everyone's just yes. wants to like help and, 
Um, you fit in great. You're so warm too that I think it would be the perfect match. Unreal, unreal. Yeah, well, one day. I'm sure I'm sure it will one day. Um, thanks again for for being a part of this. It's um, Thank you. awesome. It's really, really cool. Uh, for those wanting to find Emily, you can find her on Instagram, Emily K. Falvey. That's how I found her. So yeah. I'm sure you can find her too. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, I'll, I'll put all that in the description when it's on this podcast on Spotify, et cetera. And um, yeah, thanks again. And we'll Thank um, we'll be in touch for, for what's to come for you. And yeah, thank, thank you. Great. Have a great day. You too. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to Coffee with Carter. I hope you enjoy this episode. You can check out my music on Spotify by searching Carter and feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at Carter Music on what you thought of the episode. I'll see you next time.